Hi, welcome to this tutorial where I'm just going to prove to you what the variance x is for a random variable x which is distributed as a uniform continuous distribution between the values of a and b. And we should be familiar with its graph, it looks something like this, and the probability density function is defined as f of x equals 1 over b minus a when x is greater than or equal to a but less than or equal to b and zero otherwise. Okay, so we're going to work towards proving the variance of x then is b minus a all squared over 12. Now you should be familiar with the fact that the variance of x is always equal to e of x squared minus e of x all squared. So we need to work out first of all what e of x squared is going to be. So we'll start by putting that down here. And I'm going to have to write quite small if I'm to get this on the same screen, okay, without having to scroll this. So hope you'll appreciate that fact, okay. So e of x squared then, we should be familiar with the fact that it's equal to the integral of x squared times f of x integrated with respect to x and our limits go from a to b okay so put a there b there now we know what f of x is when x is between a and b it's given as this constant value 1 over b minus a so because it's a constant value we can put it outside the integral so i can put 1 over b minus a then we have the integral sign going from a to b of x squared and that's integrated with respect to x. Now I don't have to put the 1 over b minus a out the front of the integral, I can leave it inside but it does make the integral a lot easier to work with. Okay so if I integrate this then what I'm going to get is the 1 over b minus a and the integral of x squared is x cubed over 3 and that's going between the limits a to b. And then all I need to do is put in these values for b first of all and then subtract what we get when we put a through. So if we put the b through first, we've got b cubed over 3 minus a cubed over 3. Well, I can just simply write that as b cubed minus a cubed all over 3 lots of b minus a. Okay, so that's e of x squared. And I did say that variance of x, therefore the variance of x, is equal to e of x squared minus e of x all squared. So if we just write this in now, e of x squared, we work that out just up here, that's going to be b cubed minus a cubed, all divided then by 3 times b minus a. And then we've got minus e of x all squared. Now e of x, the expected mean, is a plus b over 2 and if we were to square this we're going to square the top which is a plus b all squared and we square the bottom 2 squared well that's going to be 4. Now all we need to do now is just tidy this up so we just come down here we've therefore got the variance of x var x okay is equal to well, I'm going to want to put this all over one common denominator. So let's just put a long line like so. So it's going to be 12 because 3 and 4 can go into 12. And we'll also need b minus a. So that lowest common denominator here is going to be 12, I should say, times b minus a. Now, for the first fraction, what do we multiply 3 times b minus a by to get this denominator? Well, it's just simply 4. So I need to times the top by 4. So we've got 4 multiplied by b cubed minus a cubed. 
And next, for this fraction here, I've got to multiply the 4 with 3 times b minus a. So I must multiply the top also by the 3 times b minus a. So we've got minus 3 b minus a. Now I'm going to multiply them with a plus b all squared. Now rather than write a plus b all squared, I'm going to work that out here. And a plus b all squared is going to be a squared. You square the first term, and then you're going to get twice the product, twice ab, so you're going to get plus 2ab. And then you get the last term squared, so it's going to be plus b squared. Okay? Now what does this equal? Well, we've got our denominator here, 12 times b minus a. And if we start expanding the top here, we're going to have 4 times b cubed, so that's 4b cubed. Then 4 times the minus a cubed is minus 4a cubed. And now I'll hold back the minus 3, but start to expand these two brackets. Starting with b, I'm going to times b with each of the three terms, and then minus a with each of the three terms. So b times a squared is going to be a squared b. And then b times the 2ab plus 2ab squared. b times the b squared is going to be plus b cubed. Now we start with the minus a. Minus a times a squared is minus a cubed. Minus a times the 2ab is going to be minus 2a squared b. And finally, minus a times the b squared is minus a b squared. Now I'm going to start to expand the bracket further by multiplying through now with the minus 3. So we're going to have minus 3a squared b. And then minus 3 times 2ab squared is going to give minus 6ab squared. Minus 3 times b cubed is minus 3b cubed. Minus 3 times minus a cubed is plus 3a cubed. Minus 3 times the minus 2a squared b is going to be plus 6a squared b. And finally, minus 3 times the minus ab squared is going to be plus 3ab squared. And again, all this is divided by 12 times b minus a. Now, if I group up my terms on the top here, we've got for the b cubed terms, we've got 4b cubed minus 3b cubed, so that's going to be b cubed. And then next, if we look at the ab squared terms, we've got minus 6ab squared, and we've got plus 3ab squared. So it's going to be minus 3ab squared. Next, if we look at the a squared b terms, we've got minus 3a squared b there, and we've got plus 6a squared b. So it's going to be plus 3a squared b. And lastly, we've got the a cubed terms. We've got minus 4a cubed plus 3a cubed. So that's going to be minus a cubed. And that's all over 12 times b minus a. Now it helps to know the result in advance, actually, because we've got to prove that it's this. So because we've got a b minus a in the denominator here, it would seem to suggest that the top factorizes, and indeed it does. It factorizes to b minus a all cubed. If you were to expand that by, say, the binomial expansion, you would get this top line here. So I'm going to leave it up to you just to check that that is correct. But on that basis, we've got b minus a all cubed then all over 12 times b minus a. And as you can see, we can cancel out the factor b minus a into the cubed here, just leaving us with a 2. So you can see that we've now got that the variance of x is b minus a all squared 
and that's all over 12. Okay, 